All right. Hello and good afternoon, everybody. It's Tom Gallucci, Vice President of Business Development with the Mortgage Collaborative. Time is now 2 Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. I uh, want to thank everybody for joining in for today's TMC Connect web broadcast entitled Phoenix's New AFM uh, Tool for <clears throat> Forecasting Forbearance Advances. And um, the reason for today's discussion is our partners at Phoenix have built a, a new forecasting tool, very timely to the current environment, designed to help servicers quantify, analyze, and manage their forbearances. And, Forbearance impacted servicing advances, and uh, we've got some great subject matter experts from the team at Phoenix that are going to review the benefits of the tool, uh, give users the ability to you know, analyze client-specific forbearance trends and advances, and uh, go into some additional detail around advancing requirements as it relates to uh, the GSEs at a loan level. Um, so before jumping into the discussion today, Will, if you go ahead and advance the slide for me. I uh, want to encourage our attendees to check out the Mortgage Collaborative's member event calendar and TMC Connect pages on our website, and you'll see an updated view of our upcoming TMC Connect broadcast schedule. Uh, a total of nine sessions on the docket this week, and uh, continue to put together a similar amount of sessions for the coming weeks as well, just based on the feedback of evolving topics of interest from our lender members within the co-op. So I highly encourage you to keep submitting uh, your ideas for topical content to us, and we will act on those to add those to our upcoming agenda. Also want to remind uh, our attendees, to feel free to uh, refer to the different uh, collaborative tools as TMC as well as TMC Benchmark through the collaborative website, or you can connect with uh, your main point of contact here at the Mortgage Collaborative for more information on two of these uh, highly engaging Mortgage Collaborative member benefit tools. So before jumping into today's discussion, um, just want to remind our attendees, you know, whether you've dialed in or connected via your computer, all lines have been muted for today's discussion. That's done only to avoid any background noise in your area and ensure that all our attendees can hear today's presentation clearly. Uh, now, we do want these discussions to be as interactive as possible, so while lines have been muted, I would encourage our attendees to please feel free to submit any questions that you have for today's discussion leaders throughout the call, and we'll go ahead and verbalize those on your behalf uh, in a designated Q&A portion towards the end of today's presentation. Uh, if you're wondering how do I submit those questions, if you look at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you'll see icons for both the, the Q&A and chat functions. Um, you can click on those and submit in any questions that you have, and we'll see those come in on our side, be able to present those out towards the end of the call. Uh, today's call uh, will be recorded and available for playback, and access to a copy of the recording uh, will be accessible to all attendees in a follow-up email that you will receive tomorrow. Uh, so if you would go ahead and proceed to the next slide for a little. Uh, as far as today's discussion goes, got three great subject matter experts for us that will guide the conversation from our partners at Phoenix. Uh, first off, we have Jerry McCoy, uh, Executive Vice President of Mortgage Services and Analytics. Hi, Jerry. And then we also have uh, Will Partland, who, McPartland, my bad Will, uh, Senior Transaction Analyst. How's it going, Will? Good, Tom. Thank you for having me today. Oh, pleasure's all ours. And last but certainly not least, also supporting the conversation is uh, Kelton Carter, Vice President of Trading. Hey, Kelton. Hey, Tom. Thanks. Uh, thanks again for having us. Always a pleasure. Well, extremely grateful to each of the three of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to lead today's discussion for the benefit of our members. Uh, so, without further ado. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into today's presentation, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Will. Will, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Tom. Really appreciate the intro there, and thank you uh, for putting this together, and thank you all of the Mortgage Collaborative members that have jumped on here today. Really excited to share this advanced forecasting module that Phoenix has developed with everyone today. So I'm going to go ahead and pivot over to the demo itself, 
just bear with me one minute here. So what you should be seeing now is, is a bit of a dashboard on the screen here. Uh, Tom, can you see that okay? Just wanna make sure everyone can see that before I kind of dive in here. Absolutely, the view looks great. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you again for everyone for, for jumping on here. You know, as Tom mentioned, we do wanna make this interactive. So please submit your questions as, as I talk through the demo here and we will address those towards the end of the call probably myself uh, or Jerry to address the demo specific questions and Kelton, anything on the market related matters as well. But going to jump in here, really the motivation behind developing this module is as we were seeing forbearance claims continue to rise and everything that was happening with the CARES Act, we were constantly having conversations and getting feedback from our clients that they knew forbearance advances were going to be potentially a very large issue, but they either did not have the time or the resources or really a, a good way of rolling up all of the information they were getting from either their subservicer or their own servicing platform for those that service in-house to create a, an accurate forecast and give them something to work with as we look out and you know, call it potentially up to 12 months uh, of forbearance so this module is something, it sits inside a broader platform that Phoenix has developed called the Performance Management Platform. It's based on the same software, which is Click, that is the, the UI here you're seeing behind the screen. But we realized we had the capability and the structure to build a better forecasting module for our clients by taking pieces we already had developed in that broader performance management platform and tailoring it to be a standalone module that really mainly focuses on advances related to potential forbearance claims. And this standalone module is what you're viewing here today and what I'm gonna talk through at a high level. Now I'm really gonna talk about two main sheets of the module in detail. The first being this portfolio summary sheet, which is up on the screen here right now. I'm then gonna to touch on the daily cash flow sheet, which will give you an interim month look at your overall cash position on the portfolio. And then I'll just briefly touch on each investor, Ginny May, Freddie Mac, and Fannie Mae as well, and highlight a couple of the key pieces that is available on each of those investor specific sheets. Now this portfolio summary sheet, this is designed to be your executive summary. So when you as a user log into the module, we wanted to give you a snapshot of what your forecast looks like based on the user inputs you've entered, as well as some high level characteristics on your portfolio. So you can get a good idea, again, at a high level, what you're looking at on your portfolio. What you'll see here across the top center here are just some key characteristics of the portfolio. Now this portfolio was a generic loan population that we had created just for demo purposes, roughly 4 billion in UPB, 26,500 loans spread across all three investors, Ginny, Freddie, and Fannie. Mm -hmm. Now carrying with that theme, what you'll see here on the right-hand side of the screen is the portfolio stratification section. This is meant to give users, again, a great high-level look at their portfolio, the data that we have loaded into the module. So right now you can see we're looking at uh, the product type by loan count. And you can see you've got a number of different toggles here. So you can select uh, UPB, view that information by uh, UPB here below, as well as a number of different, what's called the slicer functionality or cuts, if you will, to view your portfolio. We had it on product type. You could look at it by FICO band, seasoning, state, investor, uh, just a number of other ways, again, that will help you as a user easily digest the information on your portfolio. Now, just below that, we have the current loan distribution by forbearance risk category. One thing that kept coming up when we were having conversations with our clients and how they were thinking about forecasting their potential forbearance exposure was they needed and wanted the ability to forecast a forbearance percentage, not just by broad stroke of their portfolio as a whole, say at 30%, or even more granular than 30% for Ginny May. 20% for Fannie and 10% and for Freddie. So what we've done is we've built in the functionality so you as a user have the ability to determine what you consider a high risk 
forbearance loan. And what you're seeing here in the bottom right hand side of the screen, this is the UPB of each of those risk categories here. So the yellow is the high risk volume that falls in the Ginny May category. Blue is low risk and red is medium risk. Now I'll show you where you as a user have the ability to adjust what you consider high risk. But at a high level, it's based on six components. That's product type, so FHA, VA, or USDA, FICO score, LTV, as well as seasoning, state, and payment amount. And again, I'll show you where those toggles are as we get in the investor specific sheets. But a key theme as we, to keep in mind as we go through the tool here is that we really designed it to be as dynamic as possible. So you as the user have the ability to say, you know what, I'm really seeing my FHA loans with a FICO score of less than 660 is where I'm seeing the bulk of my forbearance claims come in. So that's what you want to consider high risk. So you have the ability to customize it to your own specific portfolio needs. Now, if we look here on the left-hand side of the screen, a good way to think about this section here is really your control panel for the forecast. So what you'll see here, if we just kind of focus on the Ginny May section here at the top, you'll see you have the user have the ability to adjust the estimated forbearance percent by each of the risk categories here. So high risk, medium risk, and low risk. And you'll see as I toggle those adjustments, maybe you have a less optimistic view on potential forbearance and you think it's gonna be a little bit higher on the Ginny May side. So as I toggle each of the adjustment, adjustments for each of those risk categories, you can see that the weighted average forbearance estimate here updated for Ginny May up to 26.4%, as well as the chart here in the dead center of the screen updated accordingly. Now this chart is your cumulative month over month forecast of your potential cash needs as it relates to all of the user inputs and your outlook on potential forbearance claims. So if we break down this center chart here for you, the solid blue bar, this is the Ginny May component of your cash position of your forecast. The light blue bar is the Freddie Mac piece and the purple component at the bottom is Fannie Mae. And the green line that cuts through the middle is your cumulative position across all three investors. So what you're looking at here is the total portfolio view, again, with each of those investors as one component of this stack bar chart. But what I'm gonna do here is I'll toggle over to the Ginny Mae piece and you'll see that the chart changes slightly. And now what you're viewing is just the forecast as it relates to Ginny May loans. You've got the green component of the bar here. This is the funds that are coming in based on your prepayment speeds. And this is here, the second column in your control panel, if you will. So as we're talking about Ginny May loans and Fannie Mae MBS loans, for loans that pay in full during the month, you have the ability to use those funds to offset some of the advances you would face on loans that entered forbearance, which are no longer making payments. So when you're thinking about your overall cash position for each investor, it's important that you consider what your prepayment speed forecast looks like and how that's going to offset any potential advances you might have for forbearance loans. So what we've done in the module here is broken those pieces out. So you can see the green bar here is again, cash coming in from forecasted prepayments. The pink would be the net advance you would have to outlay to Ginny May during that month based on the number of loans that are in forbearance that are no longer making payments. And the brown component here at the bottom, this is the T&I component of the advance that you as the servicer would have to set aside each month to cover that pending tax payment that's coming due at some point in the future. Now for T&I, we took a simple accrual approach. So for an escrow loan that has a $200 a month payment, we assume that if that loan enters forbearance, you as a servicer are going to set that $200 a month aside each month to cover that tax payment that may come due at the end of the year or you know, throughout the year, depending on the specific state timelines. Now what I'm gonna show, here, show you here next is as I, toggle the prepayment speeds. So let's say you and 
have a different outlook on your portfolio. Maybe you think speeds are going to be a little bit slower than what I had here initially. So you believe, you know, maybe 10% for the next three months, 8% for six months out and 5% here, seven months plus. You can see as I updated each of those toggles, the green bars in each of those categories drop down. So you've got less cash coming in from potential prepayments, as well as the blue line, which is the cumulative position overall sank given that on an overall basis, you now have less cash coming in to offset your potential advances. So your cumulative position will be slightly worse as you go out here looking at a 12 month forecast. Now the next piece I'm gonna dive into in a little bit more detail here is the daily cash flow sheet, where we're gonna look at one of these months in more detail. So you as a user can see what your cash position is throughout the month. Now, as I move over here to the daily cash flow sheet, a couple of things I want to mention. This entire model is run at the loan level. So all of the forecasts, and as I mentioned, the TNI, that accrual approach, everything is forecast at the loan level. And we do request um, you know, the forbearance flag added as well, because we want to show you as a user, hey, here's what your forecast looks like for just the loans you already have in forbearance as well as any incremental loans you expect to enter forbearance, again, based on your inputs, uh, your forecast, really your outlook on potential forbearance claims here as we move throughout the year. And one key field that really helps drive this model and what you're looking at here from an intra-month perspective is the last paid installment date. So what we've done is in order to give you as a user a guide on what your cash position will be intra-month. We've taken the last paid installment date and we've extrapolated that out so you can forecast your intra-month cash position. So what you're looking at here, again, this is just Ginny May for the month of April. And we'll take a look at a future month here in a minute. But what you can see here is based on that last paid installment date, you can see cash coming in at the beginning of the month from regularly scheduled payments. As well, that cash balance continues to grow throughout the month. So what we've done is said, hey, for a borrower that typically makes their payment on the eighth of the month, we're gonna assume that they're going to continue to make their payment on the eighth going forward. So that's how we've taken it and applied it to future months. So you can see how your cash balance grows throughout the month here. And a good way to think about this chart is the cash that's available in your PNI custodial account. So this chart does not include TNI. So this is really just the funds that you would have available to cover that remittance payment owed to Ginny Mae in this case. Now for this demo and this loan population, we assume that the entire Ginny Mae portfolio uh, were part of Ginny Mae twos. Now it is dynamic to show different remittance days for Ginny Mae ones and Ginny Mae twos. So you would see two different dips here. But as we approach the 19th of the Ginny Mae remittance day for Ginny 2s, you can see that this servicer collected just over 8 million in their PNI custodial account. However, that was not enough to cover the remittance that they owe to Ginny based on the number of loans that entered forbearance, the number of delinquent loans where payments were not coming in. So this servicer would have an advance in the month of roughly 2.3 million that they would have to outlay in order to cover that remittance payment owed to Ginny. Now that negative cash position or this $2.3 million advance, it shrinks as we move throughout the month as you continue to get late payments that come in throughout the month. And what we've done here at the end of the month, we've seen um, from the data that we've looked at, there's a pretty even split, you know, call it 50-50 between payments that come in at the end of the month uh, in terms of paid in full loans versus loans that pay in full kind of throughout the month. So what we've done for this demo portfolio kind of based on data we had at the time was we took a conservative approach and said, let's assume that the paid in full loans are all going to come in during the last week of the month, really the last three days. So that's where we've applied the paid in full funds coming in for April. So you can see that this servicer would end the month in a positive cash position here. Again, given the funds that are coming in from those prepayments, but you still potentially have an advance here 
intra month to cover that remittance payment. So we wanted to include this view for our clients and for users so they can have that conversation if they're using any sort of financing or a warehouse line that they may need to draw on in order to cover that remittance payment to have that conversation with their warehouse bank to say, hey, I'm gonna to need to draw or potentially draw up to 2.3 million, but I'm gonna be able to pay down that line as my paid in folks come in towards the end of the month here. Now the timing of paid in fulls is something we have made dynamic. Um, so in the latest version of the module, which we've rolled out already to current AFM users. Um, so if any of you are on the call, you probably are seeing the little different view than what you've got uh, in your current module. But we've created a dynamic capability so you as the user can set kind of when the prepayments come in to help you get a better idea of what this remittance uh, payment would look like and any potential advance you'd have to take, take on there. Again, based on your own personal experience of prepayment speeds throughout the month. Now, I'm just going to toggle down here and show you how we've extrapolated this forecast out to future months as well. So again, if we look at September, so jumping kind of ahead here in the year, you'll see that this servicer um, really gets themselves upside down relatively quickly. Now starting the month with a negative balance or an advance of already 3.1 million. Now that advance does shrink as they go throughout the month here. And right up until you know the 18th, 19th, they do come to a positive cash position here. However, once they hit that remittance day on their Ginny Mae twos, they now have to outlay nearly 8.6 million in advances to cover that remittance payment owed to Ginny. Again, you see a spike kind of here at the end of the month as they get prepayments that come in last three days. However, this servicer would still be ending the month in a negative cash position, really advancing 3.1 million in terms of P&I funds owed to Ginny Mae to cover that remittance payment. Now I'm gonna to toggle over here to the investor specific sheets. And just a couple of items I wanted to highlight on these pages for everyone. I mentioned it earlier at the beginning of the call, um, but you as the user have the ability to tailor what you consider high risk by FICO score, product type, LTV, seasoning, state, as well as monthly payment amount. So do just wanna show you, and we've updated the view a little bit for those users that are currently already in the AFM module. But here in the bottom left-hand side of the screen, you can see the high risk FICO and high risk LTV buttons here. So as I open these up, I'm gonna go ahead and just change what is considered high risk for the FICO bands. So dropping it from 700 down to 660. And as I close this, what you'll see here is in the bottom left-hand side of the screen, the UPB balance that fell in each one of those risk categories updated accordingly, as well as your cumulative month-over-month -month forecast here. And I know it might be kind of hard to see if the zoom lagged at all uh, to see those numbers change, but I will do the same for LTV here. And hopefully you can see that and how those numbers update and adjust accordingly. So if you just keep an eye out here, probably easiest place to see it is the bottom left-hand side of the screen as those UPP figures changed. I noticed, you know, I think it was 750 million or so on the low risk, now up to 800 million. A couple other things to mention here as we go through this. This model is designed as a, you know, really a SaaS platform, so software as a subscription. So as we're constantly and continually getting new information from the agencies, we're updating those requirements um, you know, in real time for current users, as well as taking feedback and suggestions from the current user community to help improve the model itself and really give you as the user the most functionality in the tool. So you see I toggled over here to the Freddie Mac page. And again, based on the latest information we have from Freddie, you know, you're only required at this point to advance four months of interest. At that point, you would be able to stop advancing. However, you can see that even though the pink component of the bar here, which is the interest you would have to advance to Freddie Mac levels off, you do still have the building TNI component, which is the brown piece here at the bottom. Also just wanna mention that 
everything in this module, given that it is run at the loan level, is exportable. So you can see I just kind of dove into the numbers behind the screen here. And you as the user have the ability to export any of that information if you'd like to use it in some other form or some other fashion. Now those were the key pieces that I wanted to highlight on the module today. Really appreciate everyone taking the time and I know we wanted to leave some time at the end of the call here, 10 or 15 minutes or so to address questions or anything folks would like to see a little more detail on. But really appreciate the time and I think you know I'll, I'll pause here and open it up. Like I said, probably myself, Jerry, or, or Kelton from the Phoenix side will address any questions that have come in. So Tom, maybe open it up back to you and kind of how we want to address questions. Sounds fantastic, Will. I appreciate you going through that uh, demonstration of the module. Um, very visually compelling information and uh, really cool how you can kind of make some uh, intermonth adjustments to your cash positioning. Um, I want to remind our attendees, as Will mentioned, now would be the time. Any questions that you have for our three discussion leaders today, uh, please feel free to submit those either via the chat or Q&A function, and I'll go ahead and queue those up for you. Um, question I've got coming in here, um, can the module be adjusted to filter out GSEs that, that don't have a servicing portfolio in? Yeah, this is, this is Will. So um, just to make sure I understand the question, um, were you look, um, and maybe probably answer kind of back in the comment box, but if you were asking if you could kind of uh, for non GSC, so uh, potentially any private loans or FHLB, those types of products um, can be incorporated in the module as well. And it is again, all run at the loan level. So you as the user, as long as you tag those loans, appropriately kind of based on where they sit. Um, we, we will isolate those and roll those up and what you'll see here, um, and I'll just toggle back to the module, um, is that, you know, rather than having kind of a Ginny, Freddie, Fannie specific sheet, you'll also have, a, you know, a, a privates or FHLB, et cetera, uh, based on any other product you have in your portfolio. I think, and apologies, if that did not answer your question, feel free to, you know, kind of comment back here and we can, can address that. You know, you know what, actually it indirectly did. Um, it, it was kind of related to GSEs that uh, would have a servicing portfolio with, but I think in your answer and explaining that it's all going to be based on the loans that you tag um, is what's going to then filter through to the, uh, to the forecasting module, correct? Yeah, so Tom, this is Jerry. So yeah, everything runs mm -hmm. as, as, as well as articulated. We run everything at the loan level. So based upon the investor criteria at the loan level, it carries through. So to the degree that it's USDA, it's incorporated into the Jenny side or that will fall into one of the, the GSEs that are there, FHLB. Uh, and then to the degree that it's a private uh, or portfolio loans, whole loans, uh, typically what you'll have those is moved to non-accrual and then you'll have the impact of the T&I as the build that would show up on those. Got it. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate that clarity. Um, another question here, you know, I guess from a user perspective, can the AM or the module uh, export the findings for into like a report form to share internally for a team? Yes, everything works, uh, can be exported uh, in Excel or a PDF okay. or drop in, again, you can take the picture and or the data itself that is underlying it. Just right click. And kind of a follow up. Export. Oh, sorry about that. No, yeah, it's all right. Uh, and then just a follow up to that, um, can a user then, I'm assuming they can also filter uh, through the module information what they would want to export into a report? So again, everything is kind of on, on the on the particular sheet. So we're uh, in a particular section that you are on. You would have the the data, so you can export the whole data, and then 
uh, and take what you want or don't want from that. You think if you dump it into Excel and say, I only want one month, you can then show just one month. Uh, but you'll get all of it. Uh, but each one of the views that you saw are independent. So therefore, you can bring forward that you can bring down them independently uh, and do with it as you as you desire. Got it. Appreciate that. And then just a reminder to our attendees, any questions that you have based off what you've seen on the forecasting module, please feel free to filter those through the chat Q&A function. Um, question I've got from my end, and maybe a little bit hypothetical here, but you know, say I'm a, a lender that maybe has a relationship with Phoenix, but not necessarily current access to my servicing portfolio, but I love what I'm seeing with the, uh, with the forecasting module and uh, you know, want to get to that position. Um, I, I guess maybe you could walk us through what the process would be uh, to be able to, I guess, get that relationship in place or supply the data to Phoenix that would allow uh, for a client that didn't have, uh, you know, provide prior servicing portfolio information um, to be able to get involved and leverage the, uh, the forecast module. Yeah, great question. Um, so we're in there. So really the, the first step of that, we'd, we'd hook you up with uh, one of our uh, um, uh, Phoenix sales representatives, Kelton, gonna, as one of the leaders of that, uh, of the team for us, and that we kind of would work through that. Uh, make sure we understood your portfolio. And then we would go through, we've, we've set it up so that we basically are able to take the data in a very straightforward, pretty much everything that you would provide your normal provider uh, uh, that's doing your valuation. So we use about 30 data attributes or what we're, what we're bringing forward into the model. Uh, the biggest of which, and I think Will touched on it as well, is the date of the last paid installment, because that really provides the perspective of the intra-month. But basically, we would take that data as of the last day of the month uh, uh, that you prior that you had from the prior month, uh, bring down uh, whatever your forbearance flags were the, on the loans, and uh, we would ingest that and then turn around and provide you guys, the the client an opportunity to kind of see it and run through what we'll call a UAT through a in a day or two of that, and then you'd be off to the races. Awesome, appreciate that uh, that feedback, Jerry. Um, Taking a look here, I don't have any additional questions at this moment, so I do want to uh, turn it back over to you guys to have uh, yeah, any final remarks you'd want to share with the attendees today before we wrap up the discussion. Yeah, thank you, Tom. This is Will. One thing I'll just add on, on Jerry's last comment was that, you know, again, we really wanted this to be designed um, to be as easily deployable for for folks as possible, you know, current Phoenix client or not. Um, so really designed to be only three to five business days to get to get you up and running and, and to use one of Jerry's terms, uh, hands on a keyboard in the module playing with with data um, so you can see it in real time. So just just want folks to know it's designed to be a really quick and, and easy deployment um, on their side. But that was really all I wanted to add. And then just, you know, thank you again, Tom, for putting this together and, and thank yeah. you for collaborative yeah. as well. And this is Kelton here. I'll add one point. Um, and is, this was partially covered is, um, you know, a, a lot of originators who are holding servicing portfolios are, are seeing that prepays are covering the advance obligation today. Um, but, but what this model does and, and what we're seeing is, you know, what, what you really should be looking at is, is three to four to six months out because that's when really the cash constraints are, are, are going to take hold. Um, you know, we, we do expect prepays to slow with this uh, increase in forbearance. And so, uh, you know, looking at this for, for the long term is, is something that we would uh, highly recommend. Fantastic. Appreciate the uh, additional color there, Kelton. And um, on that note, without any additional questions, we'll go ahead and wrap up today's discussion. Uh, again, want to thank Will for guiding the demonstration through the forecasting module, and Jerry and Kelton for um, commentary as well and providing your insights on the value of this forecasting module. And I think that is really impressive. 
uh, how short of a turn time you've been able to create for the module, considering how robust the, the data set of information being provided uh, to the lender is. So, um, you know, highly encourage our attendees, if there's any questions that did get the chance to address or, you know, want to connect with Phoenix offline, um, we'll certainly provide contact information for the team at Phoenix as part of the follow-up correspondence as well. So thank you, everybody, again uh, for your time today and for joining us. And on that note, I hope you stay well and stay sane and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, guys.